But speaking of fighting, let's talk about some real fighting. And okay. so you, uh, the UFC has original has um, just uh, uh, somewhat announced it hasn't been one hundred percent confirmed, but it's coming shortly. That uh, Israel Adesanya, who you mentioned a little bit earlier, will be fighting Kelvin Gastelum for the interim middleweight title. Now, this is happening because Robert Whitaker uh, had the unfortunate abdominal injury. There was a bowel problem, and he had to pull out of the main event against Gastelum at UFC 234 in Australia because of this injury. So he's not going to be ready to compete anytime soon, and because the UFC is for whatever reason, all of a sudden now trying to make sure that somebody defends their title, uh, you know, regularly enough, which was not a problem with Conor McGregor held the title for hostage for like two years. But that's an entirely different show. Um, they're wanting to go the interim route. Right. Uh, and they've done that. This is not the first time they've done it. They've done it before. So. Uh, it is what it is. So I wanted to ask you, what is your opinion on interim titles in the UFC? I love the interim titles because it sets up a uh, path that I think is interesting. Because what happens is um, when the championship is vacated for one reason or another, everybody's left it. There's that old sport saying you can only fight who's in front of you. You can only play who is, who's in front of you, right? Mm -hmm. And you have someone who's saying... I beat everybody else here. I am the best. And now you got to get back up off your butt and prove to me that you deserve to be this. And in different scenarios, it'll be for different reasons. So like in the case of a Connor who didn't have a major injury or something, uh, you call him out and say, you've been running from me or something like that. That makes the fight interesting when the interim fights the guy who had it before. So, a lot of times, uh, UFC has been accused of not having a clear path to the title. Who's a contender? Who deserves a shot? And blah, blah, blah. Whereas I think the interim actually cleans that up in a situation where if you didn't have the interim, it could get really messy because you got people waiting around uh, for one per person. And I think it puts pressure on people who aren't defending their belts to be active uh, you know, to rehab, take that extra time off or whatever situation it is because then interim just becomes the belt. You know, you vacated it and now it's theirs and they've put in the work while you were away to prove that they were the best. So I'm totally fine with interims. Um, here's the thing. As a, as a singular concept, I don't have a problem with interims. The execution of the interim championships in the UFC and, you know, the inconsistency of when they're brought out is where I have the issue. Um, mm -hmm. Very, the, the UFC absolutely needs to set a standard that says that our champions are required to defend their titles, blah, 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 amount of times, a year or, or what have you. If for mm -hmm. whatever reason, you cannot come to an agreement that says it. So say, for instance, the rule is twice a year. If you're a champion, you should you have to defend your title twice a year at the least. Right. So if that's what you're if that's what the deal is, if for whatever reason you're not going to be able to you, you're not you're, you're you know, like, say, for instance, you fight in March. Right. You pretty much expecting you to fight in September. And if not in September, then we need to see you fighting in October, November, whatever, at the very latest December. But if it happens, if, if it comes up when here's your, here's your last card in December, right, and you have not defended your title as of yet in the last card in December, then an interim bout, a title, a, a, a bout for the interim, for your interim title or for an interim title in your division should be set at that point, you know, because you're – you are holding the belt up and no one knows exactly when they can expect for that title to be uh, available. Now, here's the thing. What I also think should happen is there should be a cutoff for how long an interim title remains in existence. Right. So say, for instance, if you were supposed to have a bout in uh, you defended your title first in March. Right. 
And now here it is, September to December, you're supposed to defend it again, and you and you can't. So in de in December, we establish a interim a interim champion. If you now have two more months after that in which to defend your title, if you cannot, then now that interim champion to me should then become the actual regular champion. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And if it, 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 to me that needs to be a hard line hard line policy and setup and rule and structure right for the ufc so that you can create some consistency not just for the fans but for the fighters themselves mm -hmm. you know and i think that that's what we're not seeing i think we're seeing a lot of preferential treatment there's no way in the world conor mcgregor should have been allowed to gallivant around not defending that title for two years there's no I way agree. in the world that should have been able to happen especially we saw i saw we saw frank Mir stripped of the title after he fell off a motorcycle <laughs> and got injured and he, he had stripped of his title. You know, we've seen like uh, Nico Montano had a legitimate injury from, from trying to cut weight. She, and she had battled injuries before she gets stripped of her title like that. It, it, it's just the, the inconsistency is ridiculous. So that's what I think puts a bad taste in the mouth. Uh, and, and then even with Tyron Woodley, Tyron Woodley was, was they were, they created an interim title, but ultimately ended up stripping Kobe Covington of the interim title, but they created an interim title and Ty, and Tyron Woodley had never been so inactive to the point where that should have been that you know that that should have been the case so it's really to me like i said just about consistency i don't have a problem with um with, with the with the concept itself but it just has to be consistent yeah i'm 100 percent with you i mean it's kind of two subjects here it's the preferential treatment that we see that goes on mm -hmm. and then the concept and execution itself i agree with you i think the interim title should be the first phase of a warning shot to the yes. current champion. Stripping a, that you stripping need a to, fighter. Yeah. Yeah. Stri stripping's on the way, right? Yeah. Uh, from due, due to inactivity. And it, and, but what I like is that it creates a dynamic situation out of it. It makes, le it makes lemonade out of lemons. Or as Tito Ortiz would say, it makes lemons out of lemonade. <laughs> 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 Numbers, nothing but an age, Brian. Right. <laughs> yeah. I think, I, 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 I think, yeah, we definitely in agreement with that i mean it is it's it's really just ridiculous and it, it it really hurts i think overall the the sport on a whole uh so i'm hoping that's something that uh they get away from moving forward so um that is all that we have for you today on at me bro uh i appreciate everybody watching we appreciate everybody watching again if you dig what you see and dig what you hear make sure that you like and uh um subscribe and also make sure you share the video so that we can continue to grow that sub count so and huge thanks to you guys for the um for the extra subs and, and crossing that milestone yep. uh, on one and upward, we, we know you guys are going to continue to support. And I have a podcast uh, with Doc Coyle talking about the Anthony Davis situation. Doc awesome. Coyle is the guitar player from Bad Wolves, but he's also been writing about and covering NBA stuff for a long time. He's a huge fan. Um, Bad Wolves recently had, like, I think, I don't know what the top number was, but at one point they had the number one album in, like, 17 countries. So shout-outs to Doc for all of that, that stuff. He does a lot of great podcast work on the um, – well, I think it's Jabber Jaw Media Network or something like that. Uh, okay. But yeah, look for Doc on Twitter at Doc Coyle, and that discussion will be there. And on that show, of course, I am plugging at me, bro, as well. So thanks for all of you who catch that. All right. Sounds good. All right. So, uh, I'll be, uh, like I said, we appreciate you watching as always. God bless and peace. <laughs>